What? This? This is a Twisted B Fine Hemp Wick. I use this to light my smoking pipe. If you would like to try a Twisted B Fine Hemp Wick, check the description box below for a link. You can get a free sample. Pay only for shipping. Twisted B Fine Hemp Wicks. Hello! <coughs> Choking. Hello, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking Cornell and Deal Old Joe Krantz. This is something that a lot of people have requested me to review. I finally got my hands on it. It's an inter interesting blend because it's Virginia, Burley, and Perique. So it has sort of a vapor kind of quality to it, the Virginia and Perique, but then it also includes Burley. So it's interesting. When I first popped this baby open, this is not a review, I'm just giving a little overview of the blend. The smell um, is really interesting because there's a lot of sort of, a lot of sort of, you definitely get that plummy, raisiny kind of figgy thing going from the Perique. But then almost like fudge or just dark chocolate or something. It's very strange, and I know that's probably imparted by the Burley, but I wasn't really sure what to expect with this blend, and I've been enjoying it, though. It's kind of... kind of scratching that Virginia Perique itch, but at the same time, there's just a little more depth, um, a little bit more of a cigarette quality to this, maybe. Um, Sometimes Burleys can sort of taste like cigarettes because most cigarettes are made with Burley tobaccos. But often in Burley blends, especially if you're doing a dark fire or something like that, that quality isn't really there. This one, it's there a little bit. I don't think it's enough to maybe put you off if you're not a fan of that, but uh, it's interesting. I'll be reviewing this, not this coming week, but the week after. So you can look forward to that. In terms of videos to expect this week, still doing some gameplay videos. Um, there is some news on that front, though. I was trying to record the very last episode of the Dark Souls 3 Ashes of Eriendel DLC. I know a lot of you have been following that series, and there is just something wrong. Um, I was fighting the last boss. Those of you who have been following the series, you know that the boss fights can be pretty intense. And it was difficult, but what made it even more difficult is the fact that my game just keeps freezing over and over. And I know people are going to be putting in their advice in the comments like, oh, you just need a better CPU, you need a better graphics card, there's something, you know, all that stuff. But believe me, that's not the case. The game runs in ultra settings at 60 frames a second perfectly, and it had done perfect, had, had run like that perfectly throughout, you know, the entire, I don't even know how many episodes I had in that Dark Souls series. Um, with my capture software running, there was no issue with that at all. But recently, it will just go from 60 frames a second to no frames, and it freezes. And when you're trying to do a very technical um, boss fight where just like one frame of animation can be the difference between you dying or winning, it makes it really difficult. And I tried multiple times to record that episode where I'm fighting the last boss, and I just kept having these issues. I uh, uninstalled the game, reinstalled the game, checked out all my capture software, made sure everything was working perfectly, went into all sorts of Windows settings to try to turn off things that may be affecting frame rate. I just can't figure out what is wrong. I don't know. Um, I took it offline because sometimes there's issues with that if it's trying to reconnect to the server. There are just... I just can't figure out what's going on. And no other game is this an issue. I tried... Um, different games that were also graphic, graphically intensive with the cap capture software had no issues whatsoever. It's just with this game. Um, I don't know if it is the game itself. I don't know. So I'm going to put the episode up that I recorded, but you guys are going to be kind of disappointed because I didn't finish. I couldn't finish the game because it just kept, it became basically unplayable. But I will put that up. And then until I can find out a solution to this problem, I probably won't return to it, but then maybe some point in the future we'll have one last episode where I finally defeat that boss. And there's more DLC coming for this game in March. We'll see where I am in terms of what series I may be in, um, whether or not we jump into that right away. But the next gameplay series is going to be Shovel Knight, and that will start posting this coming week. Um, I should get maybe the first two episodes of that out. You should definitely check it out. It's a cool, it's a newer game. It came out 
originally, I think two years ago, but it's been very well regarded, um, very well liked, and it's come out for a lot of different platforms, but it's made in the style of kind of an old school Nintendo side-scrolling action platformer game. Um, it has a lot of DNA from a lot of different series from back in the day, it kind of takes a lot of the best parts of some of those old games. Um, games like Super Mario Brothers 3 and the Mega Man series and it's really really good and enjoyable so I hope you guys watch that. Um, along that subject though, let me relight my pipe here. Speaking of gameplay videos, periodically I'll get comments from people saying like, what's going on? This is a pipe channel, right? Why do you have gameplay videos? Um, and as I've always said or always respond to those comments, again, I'm still not really responding to every comment now because of the way the comment system is working in YouTube. It's just, I can't keep a handle on it the way I used to be able to. But anyway, I still read them all. And usually I always respond with the same thing. And it's something that maybe I should reiterate for all you guys out there now. From the very beginning of this channel, it has not just been about pipe tobacco and it will never be just about pipes and pipe tobacco. I went back and looked at the first videos I ever posted and they were knife reviews and a review on a wallet. And out of the first 50 videos I ever posted, 30 were about pipe smoking and the pipe smoking hobby and 20 were about um, video games and knives and other things like that. So as long as this channel has existed, it has been about other things. That's why it's called Stuff and Things. It's not just about pipe smoking. If it were just about pipe smoking, first of all, I have so many other interests besides just pipe smoking. Um, and it is such a niche, small percentage of the viewership on YouTube. It's important and I, I like the community, but that's never just been what this channel is about. But there may be some news in the future about the gameplay videos and perhaps where they are and where you're gonna be able to find them. Um, so stay tuned for that. I may have an announcement to make about that in the future. The other big news that we touched on last week was the fact that there was a story on a cigar blog called Half Wheel that basically said that British American Tobacco, the gigantic conglomerate that controls the Dunhill pipe tobacco and cigar line, is going to stop making the Dunhill cigar and tobacco line and uh, pipe tobacco. They're still gonna be making the cigarettes apparently. And it was a very brief post, didn't have a lot of information. And so people were kind of freaking out, myself included. And we were trying to find out more information. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this, a lot of you will have seen other things on forums. A lot of news has been kind of getting around. Some of it true, some of it maybe just speculation. But I tried to reach out to several different people um, to get some sort of clarification on this. I wrote to British American Tobacco, not expecting to hear back, did not hear back, um, wrote to several major retailers figuring that they would have some idea what's going to happen because they, you know, they sell these blends, they have contact with distributors. I wrote to Pipes and Cigars, now this is interesting, um, I won't read you the whole message I made, it was basically um, talked about the blog post, um, said, you know, claim that BAT is going to discontinue the Dunhill line of cigars and pipe tobacco. Here's a link. This would be a major blow to the pipe smoking hobby, yada, yada, yada. Um, I was just hoping that you might have more information. And I heard back from Pipes and Cigars and they said this, um, the article from halfwheel.com is in regards to British American tobacco, a distributor no longer selling Dunhill. This article is not saying Dunhill will be discontinued. You will still be able to obtain your favorite Dunhill blends. We apologize for any confusion this has caused. Please let us know if you have any further questions. Um, and I was like, okay, that seems strange because I know that British American Tobacco is not just a distributor. Um, the Dunhill Tobaccos are actually distributed by Lane, I think, in the U.S., and they have other distributors in Europe. So that seemed weird to me, but then I heard back from uh, Smoking Pipes, and they said the exact opposite. Their first response was, whoa, um... I'm losing it here. Okay, I basically sent them the same message I sent to Pipes and Cigars and they responded, thanks for the email. As of this weekend, we have unofficial confirmation that this report is true, unfortunately. I expect that more information will be forthcoming, but for now, there are a few things to bear in mind. One, Dunhill Pipe Tobacco will continue to be avail available for the next 12 to 18 months. 
two, Dunhill Pipes will not be affected since it's a different company. That's sort of their luxury company. They, they have many different aspects to the Dunhill brand. They don't, Dunhill, the lifestyle, the lifestyle company does not really like associating themselves, I think, with the tobacco just because of the climate that we live in now where tobacco is made by the devil and smoked by ruffians. Um, since we are talking about a year and a half time frame, things could certainly change. If I can be of further assistance, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, and that was the general manager, Joshua Burgess from smokingpipes.com. I responded, said that I've been getting conflicting information from other people. Um, and I was just saying, I hope more details emerge. He responded yet again. I still need to reply to this. Thank you, Joshua, by the way, for responding. Um, he said, this is indeed a little confusing. I hope more details will emerge soon too, but it seems to me that the issue here isn't really one of distribution. BAT owns the Dunhill tobacco brand. They license the manufacturing of Dunhill tobaccos to STG, Scandinavian Tobacco Group, um, and authorize its distribution, which in the United States is handled by STG Lane. Again, since we are looking at such a long timeline, it's certainly possible that BAT could work something out or simply change their minds, but as of now, I think that they've made their intention, intention clear to exit pipe tobacco and cigars. Here's the semi-official word, and he links to a, a, a Pipes Magazine forum post, I believe. And so basically, we still don't know a lot of details, and I'm sure a lot of you, as I said, have seen some of this information out there. But as of now, it does look like BAT is going to be getting out of the pipe and cigar business in terms, at least as far as the Dunhill line is concerned. We can only hope that maybe some other licensing deal will be taken up. The fact that I, I don't know how all this power structure works with the Dunhill name. Um, I don't know how much control, if any, the other Dunhill like luxury line has over this. Is it something that is completely owned wholesale by BAT? Could BAT sell that name to someone else? STG makes the blends for them. Could they sell it to STG? Is it worth it? Is it financially viable? We don't know. Um, I can only hope that somehow these blends continue because they're great. I like so many of the Dunhill blends. The Dunhill line um, I know has been remade throughout the years. It was made by Murray's. It's been made by several people and some people will argue as to whether or not which version is the best. But the line that they have now I think is a really quality, excellent line of pipe tobacco and I just hope that we don't lose it forever because I think that would be a bit of a tragedy for the hobby. So, not too much more to report on this week's Sunday Smoke. I just wanted to give a quick update, update on some of the things that I've been working on and that Dunhill story. As usual, if you guys have any more information, if you want to discuss these things in the comments, please do so. Even if I'm not responding to all of them now as I used to, I still enjoy reading them. I still like hearing from you guys, and it's cool that you guys can have discussions as well in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all that good stuff. It really goes a long way to keeping me enthusiastic about creating content for the channel. So until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later. That was a weird, creepy smile at the end there. <laughs>